just make sure that uh, when you join the when you join our session that your microphones are muted so welcome everybody uh, welcome to week number four so we, week number four uh, we are going to learn uh, today how to deal with anger and as i said before um, well remember that the assignment for your website has to be delivered today uh, well, tomorrow is going to be the, the, uh, the, the last day. So I'm going to be checking them tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. Um, and um, um, last week, what we, what we were talking about um, uh, was to deal with how to give instructions and directions. So over there in Campus Univo, you may see uh, the assignments yeah, I uh, remember that you were asked to, to, to get uh, some documents that had to be posted on your website. Also, uh, there, was an, there was an audio that, um, that I shared with you that you had to, that you had to listen. And uh, in groups, we are going to, um, we are going to work um, on that too. So at the beginning, um, at the beginning of, of, of the session today, before uh, covering today's topic, we're going to have a short review. So you're going to be talking about the video um, and you're going to give feedback to each other about the video. Um, the instructions, uh, the video, the, uh, the audio, uh, the instructions for the video where uh, try to pay attention and see all the steps that the agent follows. Because it's really important uh, for you now to see them uh, in practice. Obviously, that that was a recording. It was not a, 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 a it was not an authentic material. It was a, a conversation, you know, that was recorded with the purpose of, of teaching uh, English for for a call center setting. So, uh, but you may have an idea. Also, uh, in, there in campus, you may see uh, the other assignment was to upload the names of the members of the project you're gonna be working with. So make sure that uh, in the deadline, you, uh, you upload the names of the members of your group. Uh, what is going to happen right now, uh, you're going to start thinking about what to include. So there are some topics that we have already covered and that you can include in your project. Next week, I'm going to show you the tool that we are going to be using to record it, okay? Um, because right now, as, as, as you can see, um, hey, morning, Jimmy. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are uh, dealing with uh, physical uh, distance, so you cannot be together with your classmates. So I'm going to teach you, uh, I'm going to share with you a tool in which everybody can record their parts for the conversation. How many members? Uh, last, last, uh, last session, I mentioned that the ideal number would be two, Ramon. Uh, it would be two. Why? Because you know what you're going to do is you're going to recreate a, a phone call. So it should, there should be one, one agent and one customer. All also, uh, I said that you can work in trios. If uh, another uh, another classmate of yours uh, takes the role of a second agent, right? Um, as I mentioned, uh, a second agent works probably uh, if the um, if the first agent uh, is not uh, in the area that the customer is is asking help for. Okay, so in that case, it's really ideal, ideal that um, that you that you that that you work in trios, right? Let's say one person answers the phone and says, "Hey, good morning. My name is Roberto Carlos, Roberto Flores. What can I do uh, for you today?" And then that person uh, gives the information, explains the problem. Then you try to solve the problem and then you realize that it's not in your area. So you, uh, you transfer uh, the phone call to another person, right? So, um, there, uh, so that's how you can work in trios. 
Obviously, as I was telling you last week, uh, don't do it as, an, as a supervisor because you know, uh, I was mentioning that uh, when a phone call escalates to a supervisor, that is uh, not adequate. Normally, uh, when, the, when the phone call is transferred uh, to a supervisor, that means that the agent is not capable of handling, handling the situation, right? So that's something we should avoid. So that's what I said, uh, it can be in, in couples, right? Or it can be in trios, just with that addition, right? Um, that uh, the third person is a second agent. Got it? So you can put into practice. Uh, so what can you include? Um, there will be a rubric that I'm going to be sharing with you next week. Um, and there's been some topics uh, related to that. For example, last week, uh, we studied about giving instructions, right? Uh, this week, um, we are going to we're going to be working with uh, diffusing anger, which is something uh, really important. Remember also um, in the previous weeks, we were talking about anticipating students' needs um, and understanding their emotions, etc. cetera. Uh, back channeling, also we're talking about back channeling, you remember? You know, like repeating what the, what the other person was saying, using phrases, uh, softeners, et cetera. So all, all these things are going to be included. And I'm gonna be sharing with you a rubric for you to see what you need to include, right? Also, uh, remember at the beginning, we studied some idioms too. So uh, the idioms are gonna be part of it. Uh, so th the point is that right now you can just have an idea uh, of what you're going to include. So think about what the conversation is gonna be about. If you are uh, calling for, um, I don't know, to complain, or to ask for a refund, you know, and etc. But uh, following uh, the most of the most of the of the things that we have studied. Also, um, just uh, let me tell you that um, you know attendance is really important to classes, right? And uh, for those who do not know, uh, Zoom has this setting where you can see uh, how much time a person has been connected, right? So there's been a couple of you and I'm, I've been checking my records that just join once, stay here like four minutes and then you get disconnected, right? Uh, so at the end, uh, when I send my report for attendance, uh, you know how, what you did and if you wanted just to trick the program or just to appear, just to say, no, but you are estuve licenciado, because that's what students say. I mean, the program keeps records of time uh, the students are connected. So if, if, if you were connected one hour, well, I'm going to add all the hours and you know, at the end, uh, they have to be uh, the two hours of classes, right? So I, I will be adding and, and checking the time. Uh, so please uh, make sure that you that you meet um, that you meet the time for class time. Also, that was uh, re remember that at the beginning I was telling you that there is a, part a percentage in participation, so that's included too, right? So you just make sure that that you do the right things and and that we that we worked. Uh, that you work adequately. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do right now. Um, um, in our what in our WhatsApp group, in our WhatsApp group. Let's see. Um, in in our WhatsApp group. Let me see. Where are you? I have too many groups. Okay, modulo call center B. So in our WhatsApp group right now, I'm going to add two pictures. 
two screenshots. Okay. And it says rule card two, that's the one that I have sent. And the other one is um, rule card A. And this is what we're going to do. I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna share with you my screen right now and I'm gonna give instructions on what we are going to do. Okay, so it says Lorena says very good morning. I'm breathing then God. Yeah, that's something. That's something that we have to be really thankful for. You know, just to have the opportunity of breathing. You know, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. So yeah, it's good to good to hear that you have a positive attitude today, Lorena. Uh, so I'm saying I'm um, gonna screen uh, screen share. Okay, so this is the presentation. This is the presentation. And um, as I said, um, this is our fourth class for English, English for Call Center module. And, and the first thing that we're going to do is to, um, to, to see what we're going to learn today. First of all, we are going to learn how to diffuse customer's anger. Uh, what to do, for example, uh, when uh, when uh, when uh, when someone speaks to us, you know, and, and curses us, and tells us a lot of bad words, and something um, to highlight, and I think that every uh, a couple of you said it. You are working for a company, right? So when uh, when someone calls you, it's not personal. It's not to you. So if you ever had the chance to work in a call center, think about that. That person is mad, is not cursing you. I mean, because you caused the problem, is just that the person is desperate, right? So you are, we're going to learn how to sound, sound, sound sincere. We're going to learn a little bit about how to understand emotions and using intonation to express emotions. So that's, the, the, that's what we're going to do. This, this is what we're going to learn. But before moving to today's topic, as I said, I have already shared with you um, two, uh, two pictures. And this is what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to practice what we did last week. So last week we were talking about um, how to give instructions and also a little bit about how to ask for information, remember? Asking for information, there were um, there were uh, there were two types of information uh, areas that we can ask. Uh, remember, one is private and the other one is public, right? So remember that we can use models, and there were some expressions to use when asking for information, right? Um, so we were talking also about imperatives to give instructions, etc. So uh, you're going to be directed to breakout rooms right now. And we're going to be working in this for around 10, 15 minutes, let's say, for 15 minutes. Um, and this is what we are going to do. So this is the scenario. Um, one person in, 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 the, in your small group is going to be a university student. So you have uh, recently purchased a new laptop because you want to do your assignments and you want to do your research for your different classes. Obviously, what you need uh, to accomplish your goal is to have internet. So your internet needs to be connected so that you can have access to all the resources uh, as a student. So for this, uh, you need to create a new account, right? A new account for your internet. And obviously, uh, you have to call someone to give you instructions on how to set your account. Got it? So the first person is, is going to be the student and these are the details for this person. You, uh, as I said, you have these in the WhatsApp group. So while you are working in, in, with, your, with, your, um, with your classmate, um, you, can, uh, you can upload uh, the picture to, to share it to your screen if you want to. Um, uh, or you can take a look at, uh, um, at, at uh, WhatsApp. So you check uh, WhatsApp and you get the inf and you see the information because you 
you have to watch the screen to, to do so. Okay, so the first person has to be uh, the student who is John demanding and time conscious because you know you need to work in your assignments and your research. So what you want to do is to have your internet efficiently and quickly right now. Okay, so what you are going to do, the first person you're going to call to internet provider uh, to set up your internet account. So as I said, your internet has to be fast. So that's uh, you as, as a student need to emphasize that you want your uh, internet fast and now. And you need to explain why. Obviously, you can add some extra information. Remember, this is a role play. Uh, so this is a role play. So remember, you are a demanding student. You need to do your assignment right now. You, inter you, you need internet now. And what you need to do while calling is to emphasize that. And you are calling to know the requirements. And if you can meet the requirements right now. So that's the task of the student. So you're going to decide if you're going to be the student. The number two, the person number two, is going to be the agent, right? So what you're going to do as an agent, you are going to understand uh, the caller and you are going to give in, you, you're going to give information about the account. For example, hey, you are going to tell, uh, you're going to offer the two options. As you can see in the, in the screen, there, there are two options, the modem, which is slow and the DSL connection, which is fast. So you're going to provide all this information and at the end um, you are going to uh, you are going to uh, help the student to uh, to to set up the internet uh, connection obviously what you need to do during the call is that uh, you need to make sure that the student pays right so in order to do that the agent uh, okay, the student has to agree on uh, whether uh, the slow or the fast. And if the student, agree, obviously, as a student, you need to agree, uh, then the agent has to, um, has to ask for the information. Then you have the information over there, what the agent has to ask and what the student needs to provide. It says uh, the caller's name, address, contact, telephone number, and payment option options yeah so the the student is going to select one and after after uh, uh, the information is connect, col co collected uh, the agent has to um, has to go through the step up uh, the, the setup steps right so over there you have the setup steps the seven. And that is what you are going to do. Is it, is it clear? Uh, do you need more uh, more instructions? So this is this is what you this is what you're going to do. You're going to be led to breakout rooms. There will be two persons: one agent, an internet provider, and a student. The student has to. Uh, you need to play the student's role. Then the the agent has to give options to the students for the internet is going to collect the information and is going to guide the student through uh, the different steps to um to to guide you to internet uh, for your internet connection any question no questions Perfect. So you're going to be directed to that, uh, to the to our breakout rooms. Just um, just give me one second. I'm gonna stop sharing right now, and I'm gonna adequate all the breakout rooms. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see, right now we are 41. 
So there's got to be 20. Okay, perfect. So you're going to be directed to the breakout rooms. Uh, if someone joins, uh, you're going to be directed to, to, to a breakout room. So remember to do that. You're going to play uh, each role you choose if you are the student or you are the agent, right? So you're going to be directed to your breakout rooms right now. And you have 15 minutes to do so. Please do it adequately. Remember, you, uh, and that's, a, a, that's something that Mr. Peña has emphasized and he has told me, uh, you, have your, uh, you need to have a, not the camera, but at least your microphone to develop exercises during our class, right? So uh, you are going to be directed to the breakout rooms right now. Hey, Catherine, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now, ahorita estamos trabajando, ahorita estamos trabajando en grupos y este como ya entró un poquito tarde, eh, ahorita usted no tiene grupo. La voy a enviar al grupo 1 eh, para que vaya, eh, vaya viendo la actividad, ¿ok? Si puede participar, pues, o sea, ahí pueden adecuarlo sus compañeras. La voy a mandar con Alicia y, y con Dora, ¿ok? Ahí va. Gabriela. Okay. Okay. You have problems with your internet. Bye. Vamos a hacer esto. ¿Qué tipo de problemas tiene? Ok. Bueno, vamos a esperar. Ah, no le carga para entrar a la reunión. Vale, entonces... Vamos a esperar a que eh, los compañeros terminen la, la, el, el, la actividad. Si quieres se puede desconectar alrededor de unos 10 uh, unos minutos y después vuelva a conectarse cuando hayamos terminado la actividad. Ok. Ac eh, eh. So how was the activity? Um, were, were you able were you able to to play your roles correctly? Did someone write it in the chat or or open your mic? Were you able, were you able to? Were you able to do it? Please be careful with your with your microphones. They have to be muted. Were you able to play your roles correctly? Hello, can you hear me? I can see my microphone is working. Okay, yes, says Jimmy. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Good. Um, so as I said, uh, you just uh, uh, make sure that, uh, that everything is okay. Um, we're going to continue with, uh, with, with the class. 
I also uh, I also gave you I also posted an audio. Uh, I posted an audio. Uh, it was okay. Yes, we tried. Says Diana. Yeah, I know it's complicated, right? Uh, because of uh, of of you know that technical difficulties. I know it's 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 it's, it's difficult. Normally, uh, when this class is in is is in face to face environment, you know. Um, it works pretty well because um, we we make small groups and people go to the front, you know, like there is more participation because, you know, I can see that you are working right now. I mean, I don't know if if, if you say, I know, no, 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 So I don't really know if you do it. Anyway, all these short conversations that we have it'll give you ideas as well for your project, right? So please take that into consideration. Um, so I was telling you, I gave you, um, I gave you, I, I posted um, a short audio uh, talking about a, a specific issue from, from, from a customer. Uh, can someone open, uh, okay, first raise his or her hand for participation and uh, share with the class you know what the agent did in 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 the conversation, Jacqueline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what I understood in the audio is that the girl wanted to change her phone number, mm -hmm. and first the agent asked her information about the phone number. For example, if she wanted to change her area code and other things, mm -hmm. and then the agent gave her soft instructions to solve the problem. He used phrases like, I would like you to do, I need you to do, I want you to do. At the end, mm -hmm. the girl was able to change her phone number thanks to the way the agent gave her the instructions. Okay, good, good, very good. So thank you so much, Jacqueline. You see, just simple like that. I um, mean, she summarized it uh, pretty well. So thanks, thank you so much. It's just the way that, that you use these expressions make everything more smoothly, right? Because uh, at the end, that's what we want. We want, uh, we, we want to, to, to be kind. We want to help our customer. And we want to help and to, and to be, a, a, you know, what happens is with this type of environment, is that um, the ones uh, representing the company is you, right? So that's why you need to be very sincere. You need to be very kind and etc. So thank you so much for, for the feedback, uh, Jacqueline. Uh, basically that was it. Now I'm, I'm gonna show you, and then we're going to get, uh, we're going to get into our class right now. So we have, uh, we've been uh, working for 45 minutes uh, in this. Uh, we are going to start with, um, let's see, uh, we're going to start uh, with the class. Uh, just make sure, as I said, that uh, we're, go we're going to go back to, to, to breakout rooms uh, in a couple of minutes. So we are going uh, we're going to continue. So as I said, uh, diffusing anger. So this is a very controversial topic, let's say. Um, so this was from last class. So very controversial topic because uh, uh, we have uh, different ways to be here in our country, uh, you know, manners and etc. Sometimes Americans tend to be a little bit rough uh, they are not so patient, I may say. So a review from our previous class, uh, the, uh, uh, just wanted to know, did you find all the, uh, all the documents that you were asked to look for? Did you find all the documents, the driver's license, the, uh, the social security number, uh, credit or debit card, uh, personal ID card, um, and uh, the passport, if you had any passport. So did you find all the documents? Can you please share that in the chat? 
just uh, you give me some feedback. Did you find all the documents? Okay, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. So everybody says yes. I mean, Jessica, Noemi, Gabriela Villatoro, Catherine Gomez, Mauro Rivas. Okay, good. Giovanni says yes. Uh, Erika says yes. Okay, so I think that um, we're glad you know that we have access to um, to all these documents, right? From from the internet. I mean, um, if you search carefully, so everybody says yes. Okay, perfect. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad um, that you were able to do so. Uh, so thanks for your feedback. Also, Julissa. Uh, so do they vary from the ones we have in El Salvador? Is there any difference? So for, from all, uh, from, from, from you, can, can someone uh, raise his or her hand and tell me? Okay, Stephanie? Yes, in my case, I didn't find the all the documents. Mm -hmm. uh, the ID personal, the personal ID, I didn't find. I think that in USA is the same, use the same um, mm -hmm. a document with the driver license. Okay, yes. I don't know. If, that yeah, does... I think the driver license is her ID. Uh -huh. ID. That would depend. I said that that would depend on each state because there are some states that issue uh, an, ID, uh, an ID card and um, there are some other ones that the driver's license is the same ID card. So it will depend on each state because there are some states that issue different uh, documents and there are some other ones that is the same. Okay, so it will be the same. So, I mean, thanks for the clarification, Stephanie. Good. Obviously, there are some differences in, the, in our documents. Uh, the documents here in El Salvador, uh, I think that they, we don't know, I mean, when they changed the, the layout, let's say, but it's been the same since I remember. They just made some minor changes in the layout, but everything is the same. Over there in the United States, uh, they add uh, more security, uh, uh, you know, like features in the IDs. For example, when I was there in the US, I could see my picture from both sides. It's like a very peculiar image. Um, it's, it's upstairs. I mean, I cannot go and check. I wish I could. Um, but it, you, you could see my picture in the front and if you see the picture in the back, it was the same. I don't really know how they do that, but it has a certain effect that is pretty nice. So there, it varies only in those things. For example, um, right now they have QR codes and uh, policemen can check the identification from the people based on QR codes. So they get their phones, the cops they get their phones out and they uh, scan the QR code and they can see all your info. So it works like that. So right now there are different types. And as I said, uh, it will depend on each state. So that's from a previous class. So um, uh, there are some expressions over here. And I want you to think about, uh, about all this. And, and this is more like a reflection um, about when was the last time you were and why? Obviously, keep that in here for yourself. So, what is um, what is the first uh, the first uh, emoji? Let's say emoji. What's the first emoji? What does it represent? If you have to describe it in one word, in one in one adjective, which adjective is the emoji representing? Nervous. Nervous. Uh huh. Can be nervous. Uh, admiration. Okay, good. Flavio says frightened. Can it be worried? Uh, there are different, um, different ones. So when was the last time you felt like this, frightened, 
um, or worried. Um, for example, I was worried, I was frightened. One of these days I was driving my car and um, there was a tire in the back that exploded while I was driving. So um, when I was driving the car, I almost, uh, I almost lost control of the car because the, the tire exploded and it, ex it, it exploded because of the heat of the pavement. And it was so hot that uh, the tire uh, exploded because of that. So I was really frightened and scared. Uh, so think about that. When was the last time that you were frightened, scared, and nervous? Okay. So the second one, what is the second one? What does the second one represent? Happy. Good. Happy. Yeah, you can say that's easy to identify. So when was the last time that you felt happy and why? Yeah, Rosa, Erika, Diana, and Gabriela, yeah, it's happy. So when was the last time that you felt happy? We're talking about feelings right now. I can't remember. <laughs> you say, Flavio. Um, there is something that I really love when we started the class, um, that it was um, what Lorena said, that she was doing very very good and she wishes us a good morning and she was grateful because we are breathing um i think that right now as i said it's a blessing just to be alive even though we have problems and um even though you feel you feel bad you know physically bad or you there are problems at home it's just good to be happy you know there are some persons that don't wake up or that they have issues worst issues. So happy, when was the last time you felt happy? The third one, the third one, uh, what does the third one represent? Sad, Gabriela says sad. Erika, Dora and Jessica too and Stephanie. So when was the last time that you felt sad? It can be depressed too, unhappy. Yeah, that may be another uh, another adjective, Rosa. Yeah, unhappy. And Catherine says depression. The person is depressed. So why were you depressed? Why were you happy? I'm not asking you, I mean, to tell us because you know, those are very personal things. But uh, what I want you to do is, is, is just to be familiarized with the different types of emotions that we have. Um, what's the last time that you felt happy? For example, you know, I, um, I felt, well, sad, I say, say, dolorous. Yeah, that can be dolorous too. Um, last time um, I felt a little bit sad was the last time uh, that I saw my puppies. I mean, I'm, I'm not with my puppies anymore uh, because they are in, in another house. And it was really, and it was really sad. I mean, it may be something like really simple, you know, but you know, I was, get, I, I was used to having my puppies with me. And right now, I mean, in, 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 in my new house, I cannot have my puppies. Um, so I, I, felt, I felt sad and I need to go and see them. So the, uh, the fourth one, what does the fourth emoji represent? Angry, says Ramon and Natalie. Gabriela also says angry. Diana says furious. Yeah, that may be another adjective to describe it. Jacqueline says uh, angry too. Rosa Maribel says cross. Catherine says that's me. <laughs> Come on, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Lorena says angry, Ol uh, Olga also says cross. Yep. Uh, and again, the same question. Rage, said Ramon. Yeah, that's a, that may be another one, another uh, adjective to describe it. Upset and mad, that's what Dahlia says. Yeah, that's another one. Displeased, yeah, that's a really good adjective too. 
because we don't really know. So when was the last time that you felt like that? When you felt like that? When was the last time that you felt angry? And why was the reason that you were angry? Oh, this morning says Ramon, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, at least, you know, like being in class, it distracts you a little bit, right? So that's what I, and that's what I like about being a teacher because sometimes like when you have your personal issues, like if you are angry or something like that and you come to teach, I don't know if you may understand some people that are teaching. It's like you forget a little bit about the things that you are carrying in your shoulders, right? So I'm sorry, Ramon, that you were, that you were angry. Um, just, a, uh, um, I always tell people, you know, and, and that's something that I heard from an expert. If you ever had a negative emotion in your life, try to do something that makes you happy, at least for a moment. Catherine says five, like five minutes ago, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the thing is that uh, uh, remember, uh, and, and that's something that I, uh, also experts say, and I keep this in mind, you cannot control what is outside. What you can control is how the things outside affect your life, right? That's what you can control. You can control how you respond or how you face this, the negative situation. So what do you do to block all these bad feelings that are outside? And sometimes, you know, that's a problem because you know, like um, if someone yells at you, if someone screams at you, what will you do? Because uh, uh, you, uh, you feel angry, you know, I feel angry when someone talks to me you know, like angrily, it like, it's like that person transmits that emotion to me, right? So that, but the, the, the way I react towards um, the negative influences will affect my mood from right now until probably the end of the day, right? Because that usually happens. That usually happens. It's like, it's like if you are listening to a song and you know that song sticks to your head the whole day. Like the first song that you hear every morning, that's the song that sticks in your head. So it's like the same with the with the feelings, you know. If you get up with a with a positive vibe, you don't want to keep your vibe, right? No matter what. So stick to that, to the positive feelings. So the number five, uh, number five, what's number five? What does it represent? Shocked, impressed. Yeah, Stephanie says shocked. Lorena says, did. Uh, teacher Mabel, Mabel says surprised. Rosa Maria says admiration. Yes, yeah, surprised, says Gabriela Viatoro. So surprised. Surprise can be something negative. It can be something neg uh, positive too. You can be very surprised for something positive. And the last one, what does the last one represent? What does the last one represent? Be mused. Mm -hmm. Be mused. Dizzy? Yeah, it may be, be it may be dizzy. <laughs> Yeah, this is says Dahlia, be amused, says Stephanie, Carolina. Wonder, yeah, I may be wonder too, Rosa. Yep, I mean, there are many, it can be crazy. No, I was thinking about crazy because of the eyes. Yeah, Stephanie says the same. She thinks the same, crazy. So when was the last time that you felt crazy? <laughs> You know, like being crazy may be a positive, I may say, it, depending on how you, uh, Carla says all the time, <laughs> it does you all the time. So um, it, being crazy may be something good because you are being unique. I don't know if you, if you think the same, Stephanie, 
Carolina says me too. <laughs> it may be unique if you know how to conduct that type of um, energy to nice things, right? For example, you know, like crazy when somebody tells, uh, hey, let's do this. And you know, you don't feel like cohabited and you do that thing. So it may be something positive. So with this uh, short exercise, what I was thinking, what I was trying to do is that you can identify that a person can switch from different moods depending on the way that you face your uh, the situations, right? Normally, when people call to a call center, I mean, they, um, they may be uh, on the red one, the number four, angry. And what we need to do is that, um, um, that we, we need to, we need to uh, control that. So it says a caller or an agent. There are some adjectives over here uh, that differentiate uh, whether if it is a caller, a caller or an agent, okay? So in order to, to do that, um, I want you to take a couple of minutes and choose a, well, we have the, Okay, there are 20. So there are 20 uh, adjectives that you see in the screen. I'm gonna give you like two minutes to take a look at the screen and get five adjectives that are related to color and five adjectives that are uh, specifically for agents. For example, helpful. Helpful can be a caller or an agent. Which one of the two? Can a caller be helpful? No, in this case, it's the agent, right? So I'm going to write it down for the agent, for the agent. Uh, Yeah, in a survey, it says yes, yes, in your, in a survey. So, um, so you think about that, like when you are, um, what, what adjective describe each of them. So I'm gonna give you two minutes. Think about that, which ones are, just get five, five adjectives for agents and five adjectives for colors. Okay, so right now, um, well, we have two minutes. What I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna select some of you um, to tell me um, five, and I'm gonna be specific on the, um, on the names and, uh, and also call it of agent. So Carla says, for color, it says confused, angry, distracted, desperate, and it can be rude. There are obviously, obviously there, are, uh, there are some that, that fit into both, right? So thank you, Carla. So we're going to listen to Jonathan Medrano. So Jonathan Medrano, tell me um, five words from the screen that uh, describe an agent. Okay, good morning, Tishens. And my, in my case, I think efficient, mm -hmm. maintenance, friendly, 
um, helpful and professional. Professional, very good. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Let's see our uh, Melissa Araniva. Uh, five uh, five words that describe a color. Morning. Morning. Um, well, it could be angry, rude, confused, distracted, and frustrated as well. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mabel. Yeah, Mabel Medrano. Um, uh, let's check another five words that describe an agent. Good morning. For an agent, I think we could um, use efficient, patient, friendly, um, proactive, professional. Yes. I don't know if I already have five. Yeah, you already have five. Yes. Thank you so okay. much. So we You're have welcome. Yesenia saying for a color angry. Um, a color can be angry rude, frustrated, distracted, and confused. Yes, um, an, a, a color can be, can be distracted. Sometimes like when you are giving instructions, they tend to be there, but they are not. So diffusing anger. As I was telling you, normally when, um, when, an, when a color is in, a, in these type of situations, there are different, uh, um, different scenarios where a color can be really mad. It can be because the, um, the product uh, he or she had, had asked for uh, didn't arrive or probably it arrived but in, in poor conditions or it arrived late and he or she doesn't want the product or a service is not provided uh, properly or a product um, was uh, used a couple of times and then it broke or stopped uh, functioning. Um, as I said, the most common uh, the most common ones are those. Uh, or there will be some other times that uh, the the customer uh, is not satisfied because of X or Y reason. I mean, there are many many ways in which. Uh, uh, a uh, customer can, can feel frustrated, desperate, angry. And normally when they are like that, they want to talk to a supervisor. Okay, um, just a heads up, uh, when you are uh, working in a call center, um, at the end of the day, uh, you feel so tired. It's It's one thing that that is hard to describe. It's like, you're tired of, of listening to people's problems. And at the end of the day, you are mentally tired just uh, because you have listened to um, all their complaints, um, all the bad words sometimes they use. And that is really, really uh, overwhelming for, uh, for a worker. It's like if you are working uh, with the students and the students are complaining all the time, obviously it's not the same kind of, uh, I mean, per se, but it's just by listening to people complaining, people being angry, people, you know, cursing you. I mean, it's really, really tiring. I mean, believe me, it's really, really tiring. Obviously the person doesn't know that you are tired and sick of listening to them. That's why every phone call, you need to be kind, even though you don't wanna feel like kind, or you have to be patient, even though you have run out of patience in your work. And besides that, you know, you are carrying all, all your personal stuff in, in your shoulder as well. And, and you say like, come on today, I don't feel like working. And sometimes you get up and you say, you know, I have too many problems and, you know, I don't want to deal with customers today. I don't know what can I do, but, you know, you get paid for that. I mean, basically you, you get paid for, for helping and, and, and listening to people's complaints and et cetera. So um, normally 
when uh, when a caller uh, is asking uh, to speak to a supervisor, this can be really frustrating for you as a, as an agent, uh, because what the what the customer is telling you is that you are not able to help him or her. So when he or she feels like that, what you need to do is to avoid uh, escalating to uh, to your supervisor. What you need to do is to develop different skills to make the customer feels less angry and less frustrated. Now, this is something that you learn to do little by little. Also, it will depend a lot on your receptive skills on how to deal with people, which is probably something that not many people have. This skill is to be patient, and also to be calm. Now, there are three different methods for diffusing anger. Now, the first one is to acknowledge. Uh, um, by this one, I'm talking about, uh, remember, acknowledge can, can be used like in different ways. One is to give credit for someone. But what we do with being uh, showing acknowledgement is to be sympathetic and to use some phrases that can cause, you know, some, some peace. I mean, I may say some peace, not total peace, but yes. Um, it, these expressions is, I understand how you feel, right? I can understand what you're going through. It's like to know and to be empathetic uh, and to tell the customer, like if, if you were in his or her shoes, you would feel the same, right? And you say, yes, I understand that you are angry. I understand that you are frustrated. I understand this is unacceptable. If I were you, I would feel the same. That's why I'm here to help you. Okay, so that's acknowledge to tell the person that is on the other side of the phone that you understand, right? So that's why we use some of these phrases, right? If I were you, I would feel the same. I know you are, you are uh, angry. I mean, you're totally fine on feeling like that. Yeah, your product didn't arrive on time. Or yeah, I know, uh, I, I know how you feel uh, that the internet is, is not working. Um, I know it's not acceptable. I know it's unacceptable. You are totally right. I understand. So with all these phrases, you are just trying to calm the customer down. Mm. The other one is to be confident. So being confident, being confident uh, deals with, you know, the... Uh, knowing, knowing what you are going to do, right? To know, know what you are going to do. Um, obviously, you are, uh, you are going to learn how to deal with these, situa with these situations. Um, uh, right now, as I said, uh, one of these days, probably if you are going to a call center and then uh, that you are asked to do some things, you have no idea how you're going to do it. I mean, all the technical requirements and all the technical knowledge, you get it by uh, reading manuals um, or attending uh, virtual, right now, virtual, uh, virtual trainings by watching videos because that's the, post, uh, the content that they give you. So you get all the technical knowledge by, by uh, getting a material to learn. So you need to be confident. If you don't feel confident, it's because you know that, that you haven't done your, your, uh, your business, right? So you need to be confident about that. Um, obviously, uh, you need to assure that you can solve the issue. You are hired to solve a problem. So that's why after you give acknowledgement and you tell the customer, yeah, I understand how you feel. And as I said, be confident is 
but I'm here to help you. Um, uh, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to guide you to the process of setting your internet connection. Okay, so you, you need to know um, what you do. So first you acknowledge and then you are confident that you are going to help this person. Got it? That you are there, that you're going to listen, that you're going to guide, and at the end, you're going to solve the problems. And listen, um, this is something quite, uh, you know, quite um, interesting to do because normally you know what the problem is and uh, you just let that, that customer talk. For example, I have, um, I have seen some people uh, while working in a call center that sometimes they are just like this. And sometimes you think, you think that they are not working, but what they are doing is just to listen. So I used to have a couple of, of coworkers that you know were like this. And they were just like listening, you know, like they were like, like so calm that they, that, I mean, that they know what they were going to do, but they were just like this, um, just listening to what the person is, 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 is trying to say. Uh, and I, and when I, when I, when I look at this person doing the, when I used to look at this person doing this, I mean, I knew that they know the answer, right? The only thing they were doing is just to let the, the callers, you know, get rid of the negative feelings that they have because what is happening. Now, uh, even though uh, the person is screaming at you and saying words that you don't want to hear, you do not need to interrupt. You just need to let the person go, you know, and express what he or she feels. You are not going to respond aggressively. You are not going to say, excuse me, but, excuse me, but, no, listen, but. I mean, you just listen, 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 listen. You know, that person is saying and speaking until this person gets tired, right? And then you just go, you just try to concentrate on what you're going to say. And um, then you, when the person has finished speaking, you know, and you help. So my recommendation, don't interrupt. That's the first thing, don't interrupt um, when, when the person is speaking, but you know, respond with acknowledgement. Right? So listen, 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 listen. The person is angry. The person is angry. The person is cursing. And then you say, yeah, I totally understand how you feel. Don't worry about that. And but no, but uh, you know, and, and the person keeps on talking. And then you just let the person talk. Let the person talk. talk. Okay, perfect. Yes, I understand. But you know, blah, 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 blah. blah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then uh, the third time I say, I understand how you feel and I'm gonna try to help you. Your, uh, your specific case can be solved. And uh, would you allow me to help you? So using these kind expressions will soften a, a lot, right? So there are these three key methods um, to diffuse anger. The first one is acknowledge. To say, I, yeah, I understand how you feel, to be sympathetic, so to be empathetic, to use kind phrases, to be confident about yourself, that you are going to help the person, that you know what you're going to do, that you're going to have a, uh, you're going to guide this person through a process of solving an issue. And then listen, listen, listen. If the person is not tired of listening, I mean, that's even good for you because, you know, like, uh, you have more time, uh, you know, to deal with this situation until the person gets tired. Then you say, okay, very good. I understand how you feel. And I know how to solve your issue. Would you allow me to? And then you continue. So basically that, that those are the three methods for diffusing anger. For example, uh, the agent said, I'm not able to provide you with uh, why there was an excess $15 fee. So 
the person is telling you, the caller is telling you that he or she paid $15 extra. Okay, so uh, if you cannot uh, give a refund, probably another, an, another, another section of your word, of your, of your area uh, would be able to do it, right? To ask for a refund. So instead of using, I cannot do that. I cannot give you the 15 money back. I don't know why they charge you $15 extra. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't work for that department. I'm sorry. I mean, you don't do that because you're going to increase the problem. You say like, I'm, I'm not able to do it. No, you cannot say I'm not able or I'm not capable to do it. So you see, aha, okay, perfect. I understand that you are mad because they charge you $15 extra. Um, uh, let me help you out. You will be transferred to the specific department that can, uh, that can solve this issue for you. And they would explain it. Boom, and then you transfer the phone call. So you don't say I'm not able to do it. I cannot do it for you. So you say, oh yeah, I, I can see that, that there is uh, an extra fee charged to your credit card. Uh, right now you are calling to this specific area, but fortunately, one of my coworkers is an expert on this field. Uh, so I'm gonna transfer this phone call to him. Got it? So that's, that's the best way. Now, there are some words, uh, as it says in the slide, that you need to highlight when you are explaining something because that gives you more confidence on what you are doing. It says, for example, in this case, I see a $15 fee and the collections department are the best people to explain to you why it occurred. So you emphasize uh, the pronunciation of, of some words that can highlight the importance of these uh, specific information. Now, there is also functional language. So a functional language, as I was, uh, as I was explaining in a couple of minutes, is that, is that language that is, uh, that is used to acknowledge, right? For example, this one you have it in bold, I would be very frustrated as well. I'm sorry, my supervisor is not able, is not available, but let me assure you that I can resolve the situation right now. Because I'm sorry to hear what happened to you. But uh, um, if you give me some information, I'm gonna try to solve the, uh, I'm going to solve this problem. I'm not gonna try, no, you, you need to be very confident. Uh, but if you give me some information, I'm gonna help you with this. Got it? So there is some functional language. And as I said, functional language is a language that is used to show kindness and sympathy to people. So that's the functional language. Now, <clears throat> let's create, uh, let's analyze the following scenarios. We are not gonna create a mini conversation, but we're going to work into breakout rooms, right? Um, so this is the first scenario, the first scenario. The caller wants to know about interest charges on a, uh, charges on a loan. The caller thinks that the company is overcharging him, be, her, because the interest just went up. The agent wants to explain that interest charges are variable, which is why interest fees are higher in certain periods of time. So here we have this scenario um, that, um, that we are going to work on this. Uh, so we're going to uh, go over these uh, for five minutes. I think there are three scenarios. Yes, yeah, two scenarios. So there are two scenarios. So the first one is this. The first one, you are mad, you are angry because you have more interest in more interest, right? And the company is charging extra money. So the agent has to do is to explain that um, the interest change, right? So we're going to go back to our breakout rooms 
I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave this slide for you to see it. And um, we're going to go for the breakout rooms. Let's see. Um, there are some people who have left. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be moving people from um, from breakout room to breakout room. So I'm going to give you six minutes for this activity. Um, and you're going to be moved to a breakout room right now. And I'm going to leave uh, this screen for you to see it in your breakout room. So you can play the different, uh, the re different role. Then we're going to go back and we're going to, uh, we're going to switch role to another scenario. Okay. So make sure that you, um, that you work on this. Let's see, six minutes and um, open the rooms right now.
Okay. So for those, um, okay, so yeah, perfect, you are joining. Okay, you're joining the session again. Yes. Good. Of just a question, I mean, were you able to see the slide? Si pudieron ver el, eh, la diapositiva, ¿verdad? Alguien que me pueda, que me pueda dar feedback. Si sí veían la diapositiva, ¿verdad? You didn't see it? Yo por eso les pregunté en el chat si la estaban viendo. No. Well. And I well, say no. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I was not checking everything. So you had to send me the, the message, right? Okay, so I just sent you the message and you didn't, you, I mean, I cannot see the replies. So, um, but anyway, you had the idea. Um, so what I'm, I'm, we're going to jump into, into number two because you know, I cannot, you cannot see the scenario. So we're going, I'm gonna do the same because we're going to take a couple of extra minutes today for practicing. I'm gonna be sharing with you a, another one another scenario uh, that at the end we're going to do a role play too which is going to take like 10 minutes um so we're going to sound we're going to jump this one this, this is a, 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 another scenario but i'm going to be sharing with you another one a uh, specific role play and i'm going to share i'm going to do the same i want to share with you the screen uh, uh screenshot to the face uh, or whatsapp group so you can see it and we can role play it a little bit okay so uh, going back to, 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 to the class, um, uh, one important thing also uh, when uh, diffusing anger is which is going to go back. OK, so we're going to wait for the other ones to join because there are only 20. So they are going to be joining again. Um, they're gonna shut. Um, they're gonna shut down all the rooms. So as I was telling you, another important aspect of of diffusing uh, angry is to be sincere. Being sincere, uh, there's many uh, skills too. The skill of being sincere is not necessary expressing what we think, but expressing uh, what we think in a way that doesn't harm or does not hurt uh, the other person's uh, emotions or feelings. Sometimes, uh, and that, that happens to us a lot as Latinos, is that we think that being sincere implies expressing what I know, expressing what I think without carrying uh, someone else's feelings. Which is, this is, it, it should not be like this, you know, being sincere is being careful too. Being sincere is using the right words to express ourselves. Being sincere also deals with being careful with our intonation, right? Because sometimes being sincere can also be uh, misunderstood or mis, uh, misinterpreted, uninterpreted. It may be really, I mean, really stressed out for the other person to, to hear someone who is trying to be sincere, but is sarcastic. And here in our culture, uh, in our culture, uh, we have people that are sarcastic and they think that by being sarcastic, they are uh, honest or they are sincere. So um, for anything that you do in life, if it is, if you want to greet someone, if you want to say thank you to someone, if you want to apologize or you want to explain something, you must sound sincere. Yes, and there are some people that, that are really good at that, you know, like being sincere. That's why you need to be very careful with your feelings too. And this happens a lot in our culture. 
a nosotros no nos gusta a alguien o nos cae mal a alguien y, y les pelamos los dientes y hasta los abrazamos y, y, y después eh, hablamos mal de ellos. So that's not being sincere. Yes, you know, that's being hypocrite, which is completely different. Yeah, at least in our jobs, we need to try to be sincere. So since uh, being sincere uh, in this specific context, um, we'll let the customer know that you care for him or for her. And that your help is diffusing the end and the angriness that that he or she has you need to be very careful too that sometimes uh, one common mistake while working in a call center is to be boredom which is to have like a robotic voice and you sound like a machine like what can i do for you today okay very good now i'm gonna go And then you sound like you know the script, and uh, that may that may cause the 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 the, the customer to be uh, ang angrier. Why? Because you are not being polite, you know, by by sound by sounding like a like a robot. So if you sound like a robot, I mean, he would be like, okay, this person is not talking to is is not paying attention to me, so. So that's why we have to be very careful, right? Yep, not to sound like a robot either. So uh, this one, uh, this one is uh, is from homework. This is part of what you're going to do in your in in your assignment. How to sound sincere with the following expressions? So this is uh, the first homework that you are going to. Um, um, that, that you're going to do. You have these three situations and you are going to reply to these situations um, kindly and sincerely. So you're taking notes. I'm going to upload this uh, presentation to, to Campus Univo so you, can, uh, so you can see the slide in the case that you don't want to take notes. So how would you reply to, to these customers talking to you angrily? You didn't explain this application form properly. How would you react? So you're going to write down in your website uh, your response kindly and sincerely. I'm having trouble explaining this program in my computer. Why aren't instructions clearer? So that's the second one. And the third one, what do you mean you can't give me that information? So all of these three in your, uh, in your website by the end of this coming week, you are going to give uh, answers to these situations. Got it? So you're going to write, uh, uh, this, this week's topic is uh, diffusing anger. So that's what you're gonna, that's gonna be uh, week number three tab. Remember, you need to create tabs, yeah? For easy navigation, right? I mean, the whole content in one page I mean, I need to scroll down and just, just be careful to set the information properly. So this is for week number four because we're in week number four. So you're going to copy this. It is, you're gonna put replying kindly and sincerely to these expressions. Color, number one, you didn't explain this form properly. Response, agent, and then you explain Um, you use the words and the language that we have learned today, you put it into practice and you give solution to these three specific um, scenarios. Got it? So this is the first one. The number four, number five, and number six. Uh, that stupid phone you sent me isn't working. 
So there you have number four. Number five, how dare you charge so much for interest? That's number five. Do you take me for an idiot? I'm not paying for a service that I'm not happy with. So that's number six. As I said, I'm gonna blow the presentation to Campus Univo. So you can see the presentation and then you uh, respond nicely uh, to these six scenarios. Remember, you know how to do it. Um, in a couple of slides, um, we learned how to acknowledge problems, right? Um, also, um, we were learning that uh, you need to be confident how to sh how to solve an, uh, the problem and obviously listen, right? So obviously in here you are not listening because you know like the, it's in text, but at least you need to acknowledge and to give a solution, right? Example, that stupid phone you sent me isn't working. How would you react, you know, acknowledging the agent? So you add the line. Um, I understand that you are angry because your phone is not working. But I'm going to give you a solution. Uh, let me get some of your information to send you a replacement. Easy. Just like that. Okay, so here we have six, six different scenarios. Um, you need to be working on this. Good. So um, some discussion. Um, well, we don't have enough time right now. We just have 15 minutes. So we're not going to discuss about this, but it's just a reflection. How do you understand emotions? Can you detect when someone is happy or angry? It will depend on each person, right? Because it, uh, sometimes you can see when someone is angry, for example, if, um, if the person has white skin and uh, this person turns red when the person is angry or the voice changes, right? So that's how we can understand emotions. So um, we can understand, another way to understand people uh, people's emotions is by listening to their intonation or the voice of thought. Um, it, may, it may be, uh, it's interesting how people speak um, because sometimes they give emphasis or into different intonation, right? For example, you say, I've had a great time. So what the intonation over there is in great. So that means great time. So you listen to that and you say, oh, this person is being genuine, you know. It's, he sounds exciting, excited. That's why it's easy to, to detect, you know, like by tone of voice or the intonation, as I said. So when you're working as a call center uh, agent, uh, you can detect uh, uh, people's emotions also by listening to their intonation or their voice, right? Obviously, the way that you speak also reflects your emotions. That's why uh, one of the suggestions that, uh, that, uh, that agents receive in their trainings is just try to, some, try to sound calm, that you don't speak uh, in a hurry, for example. Like in, uh, when you are giving step-by-step -step, uh, instructions, you try to be clear, you make pauses, you let the people understand what you are saying and you make these little, these little pauses, right? And then you say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Are, we with me? are you with me? I'm gonna set you through a series of uh, steps uh, that you must follow. Do you, think, do, you, do you think you can help me with this? Okay, number one. Do you see a red cable? Is that cable connected? Perfect. So you use the, those phrases and your voice 
as I said, he needs to transmit peace. Got it? So we have to be very careful with this too. Now, keep in mind also that, uh, that the tonal voice uh, will depend also on the stress. Intonation is really important too. You know, like one important thing um, of, uh, of using language properly is to know how the intonation works. Remember, we have falling intonation and rising intonation. For example, the first one. What's your name again? So in this one, the feeling transmitted because it's falling intonation is angry or frustrated. What's your name again? It sounds angry, right? On the other hand, if the intonation is rising, it expresses something different. What's your name again? What's your name again? So in this one, the speaker sound can sound differently. What's your name again? It may be polite or requestive, or probably the person um, uh, didn't hear it. And you know, politely, you are requesting in extra information. So the difference is, what's your name again? Rather than, what's your name again? It's completely different. So intonation um, also expresses emotion. A stress in this case, uh, rising intonation or falling intonation. And also word stress, as I said. So you gotta be very careful with that. Why uh, do we need to be very careful with this? Because you know, um, it may be really sarcastic. Now being polite or, or being angry, you know, you can detect when someone is being polite or being angry. But sometimes the phrases can sound polite, but the intonation is not. Imagine you can say, thank you. You've been very helpful. That, mean, that can mean, wow, you, you, you were really nice. I mean, you were kind. Imagine it's different if you say, huh, thank you. You've been very helpful. So that's completely different. You see, thank you. Huh. You've been very helpful. It's completely different. That sounds very sarcastic. So that means, you know, you did nothing. And you didn't help me at all. Um, I put uh, Sheldon, uh, Sheldon's image, because for me, I mean, here's the image of the most sarcastic uh, character that I have ever met in my life. So if you ever had the chance to watch uh, um, the Big Bang Theory um, program, you know how sarcastic he is. You know, he's playing sarcastic every single time. So, you know, sarcas sarcasm is something that I mean, you need to avoid while working in a call center, right? Or, hey, you need to be very careful when identifying sarcasm. Because, you know, bazinga. <laughs> yeah, I know, Carla. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you, need to, you need to be very careful, right? I mean, how to detect appreciation or sarcasm. And at the end, as I said, when you are taking a phone call, there is always this question. Is there anything else I, um, I can do for you to help? They usually, as, uh, you usually as an agent and the conversation uh, with this question. Is there anything else I can do to help you or to help? Yep. Okay, so that's sarcasm and appreciation. So how would you say these uh, phrases uh, with sarcasm or appreciation?
probably um oh just just let me ask you this um, um and in the chat you can um you can um you can you can answer this question how sarcastic are you are you really sarcastic kind of sarcastic or not sarcastic at all Let's see some of your comments. I'm, I'm really curious to know that. How sarcastic are you? Very, kind of, or not at all? <laughs> this is your answer. Jessica says very. <laughs> Carla is more than very, <laughs> highly sarcastic. So Jonathan says, eh, not at all. Giovanni says 50 and 50. Yeah, I think it will depend on the person you are with, right? Uh, Natalie says, really sarcastic. Hmm. It's good to hear, you know, like um, some of your comments. Highly sarcastic, says Carla. That was funny to read. Hard. Highly. Okay, good. So, um, I mean, that's part of your personality, right? For example, a... As Julissa says, yeah, of course, it depends on the situation, right? Um, so sometimes you need to emphasize as a, um, uh, that you are unpleased with something. And, you know, being sarcastic sometimes is not being tough, right? So you still reduce toughness a little bit. Obviously, if you are a worker, you cannot, I mean, like in a call center, you cannot be sarcastic. Yeah, I mean, you need to. I identify that sarcasm from someone else, you know, can, can, you know, can, can tell you something. So sarcasm or appreciation. So um, you can say, for example, thank you for your time and effort, or thank you for your time and effort. So sometimes sarcastic people make some, some, some pauses or, you know, like to emphasize, right? I appreciate you letting me know, letting me know so soon. Are, are all your agents as knowledgeable as you are, or are all your agents as knowledgeable as knowledgeable knowledgeable as you are? It would depend a lot on the intonation. You can make it flat. You can make it sarcastic. You may sound, you know, sincere, etc. So. Um, but I don't think that we're going to have time for this. But I mean, this is um, this is a conversation. This is a role play. We are not having the role play right now. We, it's nine fifty seven. Um, class ends at 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 ten today. But um, um, I'm gonna leave these. Uh, I'm gonna leave these as as a homework assignment. Got it. So this is going to be part of a uh, 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 a homework assignment. You're going to find a person. You're going to um, you're going to create a script for a conversation for this, and obviously this conversation is going to be posted in, on your website as well. So there is um, there is um, there are two roles. One is from a caller. One is from an agent. So what normally happens, as I was telling you, is that when you hear a caller that is really mad and angry. Normally, this person asks to escalate the phone call to your supervisor. Obviously, most of the companies um, do not admit this. You know, like the, the, the phone call escalates to, um, to, to a supervisor. But normally, uh, when, the, when the person is really mad, you need to fill out a form, right? You need to um, you need to fill out a form. Without the form, uh, you cannot escalate the phone call to a supervisor. So the conversation, this conversation, uh, has to be specifically addressed of not being escalated, right? But I was just showing you. I'm I'm showing you here that there is a form. Okay, normally, normally these forms are filled out in a computer. 
as I said, every every company has has different software to keep up with um, with all this uh, information to be recorded. Now, escalation policy, as you see, uh, requires agents to hard to try really hard not to escalate to the supervisor. So at the end, the agent is the one um, deciding whether to escalate to escalate it or not. So right now, uh, Stephanie, we have uh, two assignments so far. One was about the six uh, scenarios to diffuse ang angry, angriness and to acknowledge and be kind. So that's number one, right? You're gonna do that in your website. You have the six uh, short scenarios and you're going to give responses to them. The second one, as I said, we are going to get, um, we're going to try to do um, this. You have the, the, uh, the card, roll play card, roll card one, roll card two. So you are going to create, a, you can do it in pairs. Um, my recommendation, do it in pairs. Um, a, you have one and two. So probably if you create a Word document, that will be easy. If you, but you're gonna post it in your website. So they have the role of number one and role of number two, the caller and the agent. Got it? So you're going to create a conversation based on this information that you have here. So that would be number two, to create a short conversation based on this information that you have in the roll cards. Got it? As I was telling you, this is the, the form right obviously uh, this is just to show you that there are forms it's not that you're going to use it for this conversation but you have number two and and the third homework assignment is going to be uh, an audio i'm gonna i'm gonna post an audio uh, i think by wednesday i'm gonna post the audio by wednesday and what I want you to do, because this one is specifically a, a about diffusing anger, I would like you to listen to it. And, um, and for the next class, I want you to get a piece of paper, or, you know, as I said, uh, an, an electronic document, where you are going to get from the conversation the specific phrases that the agent used uh, to diffuse anger. So you're going to listen to it. You are going to identify the phrases and you're gonna get them into, um, into uh, phrases and we're gonna share them next class, okay? So that would be um, for the next class, as I said, I'm gonna show you one tool in which uh, you are going to create your, uh, your project, right? Remember at the end, uh, in, our, in, in our last Sunday, we are going to have a quiz. That quiz is going to be in Campus Univo and it's going to be online. So it's going to be open the whole morning on Sunday. So make sure that all the material uh, that we are studying uh, is in your head, that you check uh, the presentations, um, the explanations and everything, because this is going to be evaluated. For example, I can ask you, uh, choose uh, from the five options, choose um, the phrase that is used to diffuse anger, for example, or something like, something like those. So make sure um, that you take a look at this, at the role play card, at the role card one and role card two, and you create a short conversation on this. Got it? So um, just let me work on this a little bit. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you this um, 
before we go. Uh, before um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a screen of the of this conversation that I show you, um, and um, I mean that the roll cards, so you can have it in, in in your WhatsApp group and you create and you can create uh, your conversation. Is everything okay, people? Do you have any question? With all clear. Okay, I just shared with you the um, the the picture of the of the note cards. Okay, it's in, in it's in it's in your WhatsApp group. It's in our WhatsApp group. Okay, so if there are no questions, um, we're done for today. Thank you so much for attending um uh, attending our session. Again, make sure that you complete um, your work uh, in your website. I'm checking them. Um, as soon as I finish today, I'm gonna continue checking the other ones and to give you feedback, but everything is okay so far, okay? Make sure that you also, there are some, um, some of you that have received comments, like send me the link again. So make sure you take a look at, uh, at the platform and uh, you follow any instruction that I'm, um, I'm suggesting, okay? So this will be all. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend.